everybody all my followers uh, welcome to another video so the video today is on a 2007 Volkswagen Golf and the problem the car came with is the following so I turn the ignition on and don't know if you can see or maybe you can't you might just think there's no petrol but the truth is the needle is not moving at all um, also is showing minus 45 degrees um, don't know if that's related or if it's just a bad temp sensor but the issue I've been asked to look at is the fuel gauge um, I've been told the garage where this came from uh, they've changed the fuel uh, level sensor uh, and they said that didn't fix it so they brought it to me so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna using my new toy uh, we're gonna go to the car and we're gonna go try to activate those needles see if the problem is the needle itself or if it's the signal uh, getting into the cluster that is not that is not reaching it okay so let's see if we can do a uh, auto selection uh. Let me make sure that's correct. Yep, that's correct. I'm just gonna press OK. Uh, that's a good one now. So this is the goal. Hang on a minute. It's the 1K, so the one K no 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 is that one in there sure is yep that's the one and that's a 2007 done uh, uh, engine I don't know which engine is on this let me try to see which engine we have here Okay, so the label in the boot tells me is the BUD engine. And okay, that's gonna go. Do do do. Can it go to diagnostics control unit dashboard? tests selective active tests fuel gauge okay let's gonna press the fuel gauge and I'm gonna start I'm gonna point the camera there now I want to see what happens so start and as you can see the fuel gauge works just fine And so it's nothing wrong with the fuel gauge itself with the cluster uh, so if the if the, the fuel center has been changed uh, oh, I'm trying to rule that out but uh, we're gonna have a look um, at, the, at the fuel gauge at the back um, let's gonna see the plug see if we have everything we need in there and we'll go from there. We'll go. So just before we go, looking at the live data, uh, it tells me that that there is zero liters in there, but I have some resistance in there. So I was thinking that would show me zero ohms or something like that. I have some resistance in there, 
I mean something obviously is working, I assume. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so at the moment I have disconnected the plug and I still have the same 510 ohms. So I'm a little bit confused with uh, what's going on with this at the moment. Just very quick, let's go and have a look at the travel codes. And we have fuel level sensor, ground, open circuit or short circuit 2 plus, 2B plus. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to take the cluster and uh, try to figure out the wiring. I do not have wiring diagrams for this. Uh, I'll do a quick search, see if I find anything. Actually, uh, I'm going to uh, have a look, see if I can find any the diagrams for this, and we'll go from there. Let's going to start to check the wiring. The first wire I'm going to check, the wires were already stripped over there, so I'm just doing it while it's connected. Um, you shouldn't make a difference, so I might take it off, don't know yet. So at the moment I have that pin on uh, the wire that is purple with a white strip. <coughs> Over here I have dismantled the plug and the wire I think is going to be is this one in the corner here. Right there on the right hand side, purple with white. And that pin, that pin is there. Sorry about that guys, pin 18, so let's kind of put it in there and see how much I have, and I have 0 0.8 ohms. So 0 point, come on. Should have the camera stand with me. Gonna have to get it. There it is, so 0 0.8. A is probably about right. Now I really worried with that. Now the next wire, let's gonna see which one is the next wire. I think it's purple with a black strip, so we're gonna connect that and gonna check that one. Okay, checking out the other wire, which is the one straight next. 17 and we get one ohm okay 0 0.9 0 0.7 it's about right 0 0.8 so right now we're going to check that against the other one and we have 300 come on we have 338 ohms so it's not short these two wires are not short but now we need the voltage reference which I hope is gonna go from here somewhere let me check the third wire see what uh, what color is okay brown wire with a blue strip is gonna be pin 36 35 34 33 pin number 33 and we have about 0 0.7 ohms, so that's about right as well. Now we're going to check this wire against all the other ones and see what we get in there. But for that I'm going to disconnect the plug, make sure there's no shorts. Okay, I've checked the last wire. I have unplugged the thing now. And I've checked every wire against the other wire. There's no uh, shorts, and there's no open circuits. So at this moment in time, I tend to believe whatever sender they put in there is still broken, I think. Uh, but for that, I might try something else. Uh, let me see if I have what I need. Okay, as a last uh, thing before I actually uh, do anything else, I remove this. Make sure there's no broken wires or anything. And this is what I, I can't understand, guys. Um, look, 
Look for this pump. Look at this pump on the inside. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. Look at that. It's full of sand. It's much sand. Uh, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. I can't understand why they didn't clean that pump before be that sender before you put in is absolutely full of sand. Now the reason why I remove it was for two reasons. First to inspect, second um I was trying to do before anything because first they replaced they said they replaced that so that's one. Second, I don't know the background, I don't know what's been done before that try to fix this problem. So I was trying to do um an adaptation. Okay, but it says here it needs to be an um, empty tank. So what I was doing was I was removing the, the fuel sender. First to see how much fuel is in there, but second to perform these adaptations. So I will connect the plug in the end, then I will move the, the floating uh, thing to the zero position. Then I will press the adaptation. <sighs> but I'm going to have to clean that first because no way I'm going to put that back on like that. Okay, so um, I've cleaned the sender, I've cleaned the, the level sender, I've connected again, um, but I've tried with the multimeter, I can't see any variation on readings on that, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I think all that sand has been getting inside the variable resistor and has scratched it, and I don't think that's working either, uh, but this adaptation tells me it tells me this so it tells me that uh, um, I need to drain the tank and add fuel to the reserve tank so I haven't emptied the tank the tank is virtually full nearly full so what I've done is I've dropped I moved the gauge all the way to the lower position then I moved the up a little bit try to uh, simulate the reserve don't know if it's at the right level or not I don't really care and now I'm going to press continue. So yes, it is. Let's say the amount of fuel is in there. Okay. So let's going to cycle the ignition just in case. The press continue. Okay, in the following steps of the field gauge is performed. For this, the minimum of 10 followers and reagents return increment the pursuit is repeated continuously. After the field gauge in the adaptation, the needle phase dividing the reserve properly reduce specified values. So the press continue. If the fuel gauge needle face right, red dividing line. At the moment, I can't really see the gauge moving at all. It's 130 at the moment. It didn't move from there. It's exactly in the same place. Okay, the needle is now moving, isn't it? So it's gonna. Press it down and continue. 
Then select the top two values of the tank. The cage connect. Okay, it might be that. Hmm. Let's kind of do the following. If you want to accept, let's kind of accept that one. And then continue. And now I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move the cage here. See what happens. And you know what happened, guys? If you can see, nothing happens. I'm gonna try one more. Try to simulate a reserve a little bit higher. I've done it about this earlier. I've done it about this earlier, so I'm gonna move it a little bit further. Alpha tank, alpha reserve. Gonna adapt the fuel gauge again. And once again, we have no movement, nothing is happening. Okay, let's kind of... So what's supposed to be happening is that the, 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 the needle is supposed to start to move up to the, let's say, up to the second red line. When it gets there, you're supposed to press done, and that will save that number as the reserve. The problem is, the needle is not moving. Okay, let's go and repeat adaptation. And now, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is turn the ignition off. I'm gonna move it all the way down. That's my reserve. That's my reserve this time. Let's press one. Then I continue, switch ignition on. Then I continue. Okay, done. Come on, move. It's not moving, guys. It's not moving. I ain't got a minute. I ain't got a minute. Am I seeing this right? Let me. Let me, let's say, okay, let me accept this. Then I continue. I'll cancel the test. Okay. I can't believe what I'm seeing.
Well, I might be wrong, but I might be wrong, but let me try something. Let me pause this and I'll explain exactly what's going on. Okay, I'm not sure yet what's going on here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, well, not up and down because it's not really working like that, but look guys at the look at the temperature yeah minus 15 i'm gonna move the fuel gauge as if the tank is full look at that <laughs> i'm gonna move it that like halfway it's gonna wait for the dashboard to refresh Come on. There we go, 22 and a half. Or oh, minus 22. I'm going to move it back to the maximum again. And that's it. So. I'm not really sure what's going on here. But it looks like the the fuel temperature cage the fuel sender is connected to the temperature in there what the hell what happened here what happened here okay guys so after spending way too long on this um, I had, I think some of the info I gave you was actually wrong already. Um, because this was really puzzling me. Um, I don't have the wire diagrams for this car. But even without them, um, I managed to trace all the wires down. The only diagram I found was this. Uh, but, um, I managed to trace the three wires uh, from the actually um, fuel sensor. Fuel sender unit at the back those three wires they go all straight to the cluster one of the wires uh, is the the voltage reference and that wire um, feeds the fuel pump ah here we go with the fuel pump the fuel gauge sensor at the back uh, feeds the outside temperature sensor at the front it feeds the coolant uh, water level um, and I think that's it really I don't think it feeds anything else but it feeds those three components um, I believe that's why when uh, I believe that's why when uh, you moved the fuel um, gauge uh, the fuel uh, sender at the back the temperature changes um, now with uh, tracing every single wire I measured everything uh, I couldn't see nothing wrong. The only thing I could think was if that cluster didn't belong to that car, belonged to another car, and maybe the the wires input they were wrong. Uh, but on uh, let's say on the last oh one thing one thing very important when I was measuring the voltage reference, I was getting 2.4 volts. That's all I was getting. Um, I don't think the 2.4 volts are right. I think we should get 5 volts or 12 volts because I don't have the the, the, the diagrams or any data. Uh, I really don't know. So I didn't want to chuck 12 volts to it and just blow something. Uh, so I have the diagram here guys so you can follow it. And this actually applies to two, two different clusters. Uh, the cluster with the um, uh, with a two uh, with a 32 uh, pins plug and the one with 36. I don't know if you're going to be able to see these numbers. So this is the this is what. So I uh, this is the coolant uh, level sensor. Uh, this. I believe this is the is going to be the fuel sender if you don't have the motor 
the pump and this is the fuel sender uh, with the pump uh, is missing the outside temperature but whatever um, so on here we have so okay so pin 1 is gonna be so pin 1 and pin 5 they're gonna be the motor is the pins on the outside of the plug on the fuel sender the three pins in the middle the pin number two which is going to be the pin straight after the brown wire if I'm not mistaken no after the blue blue and brown I think it is um, so number two is the blue and brown wire and that as you can see it feeds all this and then it goes back into the cluster if you have 36 pins on your plug it goes into the pin 33 if you have 32 it goes on pin 20 so I have the cluster with the 33 pins so uh, 36 so I'm gonna go uh, only uh, referring to the 36 so it goes to pin 33 which is correct then pin number two so pin number three which is gonna be the purple and black so the purple with the black stripe it goes straight to pin 17 which is correct and then the last one which is the purple with a white strip it goes to pin 18 so all these revealed to be correct I was still um, I was still beating that 2.5 volts reference which I thought they were now right so guess what I've opened the cluster and uh, I might be wrong but I'm gonna show you there on the microscope what I found so uh, what I found is pin 33 so we'll put it like this so you have these bigger pins here and then pin 33 is the fourth pin from here so this is pin 36 so 33 is going to be 36 35 34 33 so four pins and you have pin number 33 so it's the one at the top so it's going to be that one there so one two three four when you follow pin number four there oh sorry about that I don't think the phone is gonna capture this let me see maybe one two three four so pin 34 goes all the way like that comes to this contact and look here Can you see something missing there? Let's kind of look under the microscope and see what we have here. Okay, so I put it under the mic, I put it under the microscope, and let's gonna see that. Can you see that? That is a kind of a fuse in there, and look what happened. It's gone. It's gone. So, um, how I'm going to do this, I don't want to just jump that because obviously that is uh, protection. But think about this guys, think about how the bad design we have here. So, they put a fuse on the PCB, the fuse burns, and guess what you'd have to do in this case? It's a completely brand new cluster. Wow. That's not a very good design, isn't it? Okay, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to find a, um, a, a fuse to put on these because I don't want to short that and then if something goes wrong, again, uh, or if something's still wrong on the car, I don't know. Um, it, might be, it might be that was the actually uh, uh, fuel sender at the back in the tank that was, was gone and burn that out and uh, well don't know don't know I would rather prefer to use a fuse in there somehow let's see how I'm gonna do this so okay so I I got it repaired and before some of you guys start screaming well you shouldn't have done that I know I shouldn't I shouldn't use this as a fuse but I've done it why because I can 
basically. Uh, so what I've done, guys, is I've used the zero ohm resistor uh, to jump that. They can be used. They can be used as a fuse when they have the right values and tolerance. I got it out from that board, so I don't have a clue what the tolerance is. Doesn't really bother me. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try it and see what happens. Okay, so it might be a little bit noisy because I have the car jumped uh, to keep the battery voltage. Uh, but look at that. So no negative temperatures anymore. So I, the reading is now 30 degrees. Uh, the fuel gauge, uh, it shows that there's no fuel now, which was not showing before. Now I'm going to move the, the level sensor in there and look at the gauge. Here we go. Whoa, full tank. That's it. Brilliant. All I need to do now is do a, uh, a uh, calibration and uh, and uh, well do a calibration and that's it so it seems to be okay it seems to be no problem so i believe that's go that went that was when that uh, uh fuel sender was replaced the old one probably was short and that was uh, the cause for that uh, uh fuse on the pcb to burn so like i said we put a zero ohms resistor in there guys it's working and it took me a few hours to get to this conclusion. Uh, guys, it's one of those things. Uh, well, what to say? Uh, this was the this was the repair. That was the fault with this. There was nothing uh, wrong after uh, the fuel set it replaced. So I took it off. There was nothing wrong with it. Uh, everything was in the cluster. Guys, this was a this was not an easy one, but we got there in the end. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, comments, put them below. And like always, thank you for watching.